Hey guys, all right, so today it's Mascara Monday. All right, so yes, you guessed it. I know it's been a couple of days since I posted that video, but life has been happening to me. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this hair out of my way. We're gonna finish getting ready. So it's gonna be a get ready with me style Mascara Monday, and we are going to make our very own homemade non-toxic mascara, okay? So let's get the face done, finished, or whatever and then we'll do, move on to mascara and okay. use this actually let's let's start out with powder i've got foundation on already and i've got a review on the product that i used so i'm going to use this today this is sort of a newer release i've had this for a while been meaning to do a review on it <laughs> okay but i have the essence keep me covered uh powder it's a long wear powder it's supposed to be like a setting powder well what happened was it came to me broken in the in the box so um, I re-solidified it, and so we're gonna try this. I have actually been using this for the past couple of times I've done my makeup, and it's really nice. Like, it's not a powder foundation, or at least it's not marketed as that, or it doesn't say that's what it is. They have another powder that's actually a powder foundation, and it is the Essence Keep Me Covered, I think. 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. We have hit pan on this and I use this all the time as just a setting powder. It's not too much coverage to be a setting powder. This one though is actually a finishing slash setting powder, but it's got a bit of a glow to it, a little bit more glow than the, the powder foundation. Really pretty, really like this. Essence has got good powders, you guys. So if you're looking for an inexpensive powder, glowy powder, you might really like this. I think it's sort of a dupe to this one, which is the um, AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder or Perfect in the Brightening shade. This is a loose powder, very similar effect though. This is less money, but you have to order it on the AOA website. This is a bit more readily available, just so you guys know. Okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and use this today. This is the Essence, it must be an Essence Day, the What A Tint Lip and Cheek Tint, okay? And I'm going to use it with this brush. This is the She Glam liquid blush brush. So um, if you haven't seen this yet, where have you been? Like there have been a million videos on this, but this is supposed to be the dupe to the Benetint tint. Um, the Benetint one seems a little bit scary to use for me. I don't know. I've never tried it, but this is really nice. It's not that scary. You just dot it on a little bit and then just blend it in. Now at first you're like, oh no, it's crazy, it's weird, it's doing weird stuff, but no, it ends up looking fine. Um, it might take off, remove the product that's underneath it a tiny bit, but not bad. Um, so yeah, just kind of be careful. It's nice because it, you don't have to freak out. like. The Benetint seems like you have to like get in there right away, be careful, be really, really careful. But you can kind of see it did sort of take away some of the my coverage product underneath. So the first couple of times I used it, it didn't really do that, so I don't know. And I have a different foundation on today, so maybe that's why. But it ends up, like I've used this several times and it ends up looking fine. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to apply a little bit to the back of my hand, load up my brush, and then just see if I can dab it on my face and it'd be a little bit better that way. I still like it. Okay, let's get some brows done. And I'm gonna use this, I've been using this forever. It is the Relove Blade Brow. Now, if you guys have been following me for the last little while, you'll see that this bald patch has filled in. Don't ask me, I don't know. I've been using some castor oil on my eye, eyebrows and eyelashes at night for the past couple of weeks. It's been quite a while actually, I don't even know how long. I don't know if that has helped or not helped. I just been doing it and that place is filled in. I could not tell you. If that's what did the trick or not. Okay, so that's pretty much all we're going to do for face makeup. So let's get this um, 
mascara mixed up. So basically all you're gonna do is mix up some activated charcoal. Now I didn't, I don't have the charcoal powder, I just have the capsules, okay, but it's the same thing. So activated charcoal, that's gonna be what gives you the tint. Um, a little bit of aloe vera gel, a little bit of bentonite clay powder, a little bit of vegetable glycerin. Now the recipe also called for some lavender essential oil. I don't have lavender. I've got a couple others, but I don't have lavender and I don't wanna use any essential oil that is like strong so that it's gonna burn my eyes or whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uncap this activated charcoal and I'm gonna get everything in my little bowl here and then um, we'll mix it up together. Okay, so basically what I've got here, this is just a little soap dish and if you guys, like if you are looking for a palette for mixing anything, um, check out these little soap dishes. I just got this from Walmart, very like, inexpensive, couple bucks, whatever, but it's so cute little soap dish and so basically one capsule of the um, activated charcoal or roughly a quarter teaspoon and then a quarter teaspoon of the aloe vera gel and I don't know anything about the brands I just looked up on Amazon and got whatever was highly recommended but I do really like the now brand for um, just natural products and stuff so eighth of a teaspoon of the glycerin the vegetable glycerin, and then a quarter teaspoon of the bentonite clay powder. Again, I just looked up on Amazon, whatever it looked like it had good uh, reviews. This is cosmetic grade ingredients, so I assume that was fine. I don't know. Um, and I also wanted a small bag. I didn't want a ton, so I just got the small eight ounce bag of this. Um, if you want me to, I can link everything in the description. I don't think it really matters, whatever you guys like, as far as like your ingredients that you like, whatever. So I have a bunch of these. Um, little mascara wands from a something, I can't remember what. Um, so I'm going to mix this up and I'm actually not even gonna put it in a tube or anything because the lady that I saw doing this, she had like the hardest time getting in, into a tube. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of mix it up and sort of roll my brush in it and see what we've got and we'll get to it. And I feel like if I want it any thinner, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more of the vegetable glycerin in. It's very much a paste right now and it's really thick. So this is what we're working with so far. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit, but you can, can you see how black that is? Like that's really black. It's not doing it justice on the camera, but it's really, really black. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more of the vegetable glycerin just to thin it out a little bit. Okay. Adding a little bit more of that vegetable glycerin sort of made it a little bit shinier but this is what we're working with. And basically just what I'm gonna do is whatever is on this spatula, I'm gonna sort of roll my brush in it and I might scrape it off on the side of the um, little soap dish here. I'm actually just scraping it right off on the side of this spatula. But the lady I saw doing this, she had the hardest time getting it into the, the tube. So this is what we're working with take some of the excess off because I would do that anyway with a regular mascara that I may have purchased. So let's try it. So again, here we are. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my cat is literally snoring right now. Okay, I kid you not, this is looking really nice. Natural, not crazy, but it's actually looking nice. I was, I'm, I'm shocked. I was not expecting this at all. My eyes are extremely sensitive to mascaras, and usually tubing mascaras are the least sensitive for my eyes. But if I can make my own, and it not burn my eyes, I'm doing it. It's drying down, which I'm just surprised. I was not expecting that. It seems pretty lengthening. Yeah, this eye is a little bit clumpier because I added more product, but um, it's not bad. And I don't know, in a minute, I'm gonna let this dry down fully and then I will curl them and we'll just see what it looks like. trying to see if it, it's like flaking off or coming off. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's staying on there pretty well. Um, 
they look decent. Like, what do you guys think? If you're looking for a non-toxic option, I've tried a lot of um, mascaras that are supposed to be natural and organic and all this and that. And the biggest problem I've had with those is that they smudge everywhere. They don't stay on. They don't last. They don't work. Like they're and they they remain. Um, sticky, tacky, or just wet, and they don't dry down, so it makes them more prone to smudging and all this and that. But these, this feels like they're drying down. It's not coming off on my fingers. I've got a little bit from earlier, but that's not from just now. Um, clean finger. Maybe a little bit of a flake, but nothing more than any other mascara that I would have purchased and tried on any other time. So um, let me get, let me know what you guys think about a product such as this. Like, I mean, if you can use that activated charcoal as a uh, mascara, you can probably use it as an eyeliner or a, a eyeshadow and all that too, because I'm sure that's what they did in, in all the ancient times. Am I right? So again, let me know what you guys think about a product such as this. Would you be interested in making this yourself? You do have to purchase the products. You do have to purchase the tube. You could also use probably one of your old mascara tubes as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up, like, subscribe, ding that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.